The leadership in Tigray has announced that it's driven Ethiopian forces out of the regional capital, Mekele. This marks a stunning reversal of fortune in a conflict that the Ethiopian government had declared over just six months earlier. The question is, what happens now? As I'll show, the answer could well determine the future of Ethiopia. Hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Kerr Lindsay, and here I take an informed look at international relations, conflicts, and the origins of countries. There are moments in a conflict where the eventual outcome appears to hang in the balance. The Tigray conflict appears to be at such a point. After nine months of bitter fighting, the Tigray Defence Forces have retaken the territory's capital, Mekele, forcing Ethiopian forces to flee and for the Ethiopian government to declare a unilateral ceasefire. But this certainly isn't the end of the conflict. The military phase may well be over, for now at least. However, there are big questions about what will happen next. I've covered Tigray in other videos, and so I won't go into a lot of detail again here. However, by way of brief background, Tigray is the northernmost of the 10 provinces of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Landlocked to its north lies Eritrea, while to its west it has a relatively short border with Sudan. Its population currently stands at around 11 million, around 5 or 6 percent of the Ethiopian population as a whole. The story really starts with the end of the Ethiopian civil war in 1991. Following the overthrow of the country's military regime, a new government took power made up of the various groups that had led the insurgency. Chief amongst them was the Tigray People's Liberation Front, the TPLF. As a result, in the decades that followed, ethnic Tigrayans came to hold many of the most senior state positions. However, in 2018, a new prime minister took power, Abiy Ahmed Ali, who set about reducing TPLF influence in Ethiopia. The current conflict emerged in early 2020 when the Ethiopian government postponed national elections following the Covid outbreak. Seeing this as an attempt by the federal government to hold on to power illegally, the TPLF went ahead and organised elections in Tigray, which it still controlled. When the federal government refused to recognise the results, tensions grew. Following an attack on an Ethiopian military base in Tigray in early November 2020, which the federal government insisted was carried out by the TPLF, the Ethiopian Defence Forces, later assisted by Eritrean forces, launched a full-scale assault on Tigray to oust the TPLF. Less than a month later, the federal government announced that its action had been successful. It had taken control of the Tigrayan capital, Mekele, and it installed a new administration. As far as it was concerned, the conflict was over. However, although the TPLF had been driven out of the towns, it hadn't been defeated. It regrouped and joined with other Tigrayan forces to fight back led by a number of senior generals, including a former commander of the Ethiopian Armed Forces, the Tigrayan Defence Forces launched a major counter-offensive. At the start of July 2021, it announced that it had retaken the capital and was again in control of most of Tigray. As things stand, while the government claims that it's called a unilateral ceasefire, in truth it's withdrawn and placed Tigray under effective siege. This is now exacerbating an already disastrous famine in Tigray, to the point that the EU Commissioner for Crisis Management has called Ethiopia's latest actions a weapon of war. For its part, the TPLF has laid out a number of conditions for peace talks. These include the full withdrawal of Ethiopian and Eritrean troops in Tigray, the lifting of the siege by the reinstatement of all communication links to Tigray, and, perhaps most importantly, formal Ethiopian recognition that the TPLF represents the legitimate government of Tigray. As things stand, there seem to be four main options for what happens next. First of all, the government could try to regroup and retake Tigray by force. Although Abiy Ahmed has already hinted at this, it will come at a significant cost economically, politically, militarily and even socially. The conflict is already estimated to have cost the country over $2 billion. Moreover, unconfirmed reports suggest that seven of the country's 20 divisions in its army have been lost, with a further three significantly affected. The Ethiopian armed forces are now severely depleted and demoralised. Regrouping will inevitably take time. Moreover, while the campaign will no doubt be popular in parts of the country where there is deep suspicion of the Tigrayans, such as in neighbouring Amhara, the region immediately south of Tigray, other parts could be watching with concern. 
Rather than seeing the government imposing order on a wayward province, they may see this as an attempt to end the power of the federal states to control their own affairs. Such fears will inevitably be driven by the widespread sense that Abiy Ahmed has been increasingly centralising power, as well as potentially opening up another prolonged and bloody conflict. It could therefore sow seeds of dissent elsewhere in Ethiopia. More to the point, if any of these other regions were to descend into conflict, the federal government could quickly find itself dangerously overstretched militarily. Secondly, Tigray may try to pursue independence. This certainly has keen support in many quarters. What makes this potentially achievable, at least theoretically, is that Ethiopia is just one of a handful of countries that formally allows secession. Indeed, the route to independence is clearly laid out in Article 39 of the Constitution. However, it would face significant obstacles. For a start, any TPLF attempt to trigger the process at the moment would be rejected by the federal government on the grounds that it can only be done by a constitutionally recognised administration. This could explain why the TPLF is so insistent that it's recognised as the legitimate government in Tigray, and why the federal government may well deliberately refuse to recognise it as such. But this ties into bigger concerns. There is every reason for the federal government to obstruct this. Addis Ababa no doubt fears that if one part of the federation leaves, then others will follow. Indeed, some believe that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed wants to rescind the right to secession altogether. If Ethiopia won't allow Tigray to secede, the third option would be for it to unilaterally declare independence. This would also present serious challenges. For a start, and as I've repeatedly stressed, it's almost unknown for a territory to secede without permission and go on to receive full international recognition and UN membership. Indeed, since 1945, just one country has done so, Bangladesh. States have a deep aversion to unilateral secession. It therefore seems highly unlikely that any countries would recognise Tigray, even though it could be argued that the Ethiopian constitution permits secession, other countries will nevertheless want to see that the Ethiopian government has formally agreed to the separation. Then there are also huge practical problems. With a hostile Ethiopia to the south and a hostile Eritrea to the north, Tigray's only access to the outside world would be the short border with Sudan. But this is seemingly blocked. Reports suggest that forces from neighbouring Amhara have captured large parts of the territory in the west. But even if Tigrayan forces get it back, it will still be a precarious link to the outside world, remembering that Ethiopia and Eritrea would inevitably block their airspace for planes trying to fly into Tigray. To add to all this, Tigray lacks what's known as a patron state. This is an internationally recognised country, usually a neighbouring state, that can provide material, financial and military support. Practically every de facto state needs one to survive. Already facing a famine due to the Ethiopian siege, a de facto state in Tigray would be isolated to the point that it would inevitably raise questions about its viability. Then again, this raises the intriguing possibility that Tigray could request independence under the concept of remedial secession. This is an untested concept that allows territories facing dire humanitarian or human rights crises to break away. By recognising a state under these terms, the international community would be able to step in to help it on the grounds that it would no longer be violating Ethiopia's sovereignty. But to stress, this has never been done before and would require a truly groundbreaking decision by parts of the international community. This leaves a fourth and seemingly final option. Ethiopia and Tigray could try to reach some sort of peace agreement. This would certainly make the most sense for both, especially at this stage. If Ethiopia can't take back the territory by force, and it can't afford to let Tigray go, and Tigray cannot exist as a viable entity unless it secedes constitutionally, there'd seem to be good incentives for the two sides to reach some sort of deal. But this would require major compromises. For a start, the TPLF would almost certainly have to be recognised as the legitimate authority in the north, a difficult step for Abiy Ahmed given his repeated references to it as a terrorist movement. Of course, this could be eased by a TPLF commitment for new elections at some point. Meanwhile, the Tigrayan leadership could undertake not to pursue independence, at least for a specific period. 
Likewise, the federal government could promise not to attempt any further constitutional reforms to undermine state powers or remove the right of secession. A negotiation could also be opened up on securing a truly decentralized federation in Ethiopia, as many integrate seem to support. Crucially, this would leave open the door to independence at a moment when the situation has eased and it could be better for secession, if that's what Tigray still wants. In the meantime, Tigray could continue to live a semi-detached existence with minimal interference from the federal government. Of course, while a peace agreement based on mutual recognition and a moratorium on any acts likely to destabilise the situation seems like the best outcome for both sides, at least for now, it won't be easy to achieve. Trust is obviously extremely low between the sides, and the situation is certainly not made easier by Ethiopia's blockade on Tigray. It will almost certainly require external mediation and strong international guarantees. But ultimately, with no really good options available for either side, a formal ceasefire and peace agreement seems the best available option for both. Despite Ethiopian claims that the Tigray conflict was over, the announcement that Tigrayan forces had retaken the regional capital Mekele has opened up a new phase in what is now quite clearly a civil war. Notwithstanding the fighting still taking place in the West, the next step seemed likely to be more political than military. While the government could certainly try to retake Tigray by armed force, this would be costly and might just push the country to breaking point. Although Addis Ababa will almost certainly want to stop Tigray seceding, at least at the moment and under current conditions, the option of a Tigrayan unilateral declaration of independence, while seemingly attractive on the surface, would also present huge challenges as things stand. And while remedial independence could be an option on paper, it would require an enormous and unprecedented decision by at least part of the international community. For all these reasons, a peace deal is the best option. The trouble is that while the outlines of an agreement are broadly obvious, the chances of securing one just don't look promising. I hope you found that useful. If so, here's another video that you might find interesting. And please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing or joining below. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.